Intuit could quite possibly be the best undervalued dividend growth stock company and in today's episode we are going to discuss some phenomenal financial metrics and some forward guidance of this company. We're going to look at the historical performance of INTU. We're going to look at their growth on the revenue side, their top line, as well as their bottom line net income. We're going to jump into their balance sheet, looking at the health of this very strong company, their total cash versus their total debt. We want to look at some comparisons versus some other companies in the application software, such as Salesforce and SAP on a total return basis over the last five years. We're going to take a look at what the institutions are doing, whether they're buying or selling this company. And as always, we will look at that dividend safety and delve into their financial metrics that you need to understand before investing into this company. And we'll touch upon some of their earnings as well as talking about their latest investor presentation. And don't forget, we will run it through our stock valuation model, getting to our intrinsic value and our acceptable buy price, given that all important margin of safety. Now, this company has had a phenomenal 2023, up 44% year to date, right there trading towards its 52-week high. It does offer a yield, very small in fact, around 0.64%, and investors who have been holding this company over the last 10 years would be up a phenomenal 657%, excluding those dividends reinvested. And we can see it did hit its peak towards the back end of 2021 at around $700. So we want to understand, does this have room to grow above their all-time high, around $700 plus, and can we see that yield on cost grow even higher? Now, let's take a look at their income statement. What we can see, top line revenue and bottom line net income, we like to see on the top line. Firstly, 3 to 7% growth year on year. Total revenues, we see around $6.8 billion for Intuit in July 2019. Latest annual report, which was very recent, their July 2023, 14.4 billion, more than doubled their revenues from the last five years. And what I love about companies is when we see consistent year on year growth, which is very positive to see. And we will touch upon their last 10 years percentage wise too. Now, bottom line, net income, does it follow a similar story? Well, 1.6 billion net income reported in July 2019. Five years later, 2.4 billion. So some nice growth on that bottom line. Not as much as we saw with the more than double, in fact, their top line, but still very positive. And on a more granular level, we see an increase from 2019 to 2021 before remaining fairly flat and then jumping up quite nicely. So overall, a nice essential income statement. Now looking at the health of the company and their balance sheet. Well, the movement of their total cash in short-term investments has gone from 2.8 billion to 3.7 billion. So they are holding more cash than they did five years ago. And comparing that 3.7 billion worth of cash numerically and directionally to their total debt, what we can see, total debt at 436 million has increased fairly rapidly to around 6.7 billion in their latest quarterly report. So we will touch upon that when we look at that net debt to EBITDA metric. Now, comparing some of their competitors over a total return basis, while well, year to date, we can see the industry as a whole has performed incredibly well with, interestingly, Intuit, although it is up around 45% year to date. Remember, total return is those dividends reinvested. It is one of the worst performing of the sector. And that says something for the sector in general. It has performed very, very well this year. Expanding that to the last five years on a total return basis, when we take a look at Intuit, it is up a phenomenal 196%. And again, the industry as a whole has performed fairly well. And we see SNPS up 532% with CDNS fairly similar. But remember, as I always say on the channel, past performance is never an indicator for the future. So what are the institutions saying? Well, institutional ownership, 83%. 10.55 billion sold by these institutions over the last 12 months with 84 billion bought over the last 12 months showing strength of the stock they do prefer it more institutions are buying than selling with a huge spy in 75 billion worth in quarter two of 2023 so that is a very strong signal by institutions that they do believe in this stock but please do remember we don't copy what institutions do and always do our own due diligence now, before we jump into their dividend safety and their financial metrics, very quickly, we can look at their last earnings. Earnings per share, 144 was expected, 165 reported, surprise positive by 15%. Top line, 2.64 billion expected, 2.71 reported, so another surprise, a positive one of around 3%. Now, they are expected to report their 28th of November reporting, 
And we can see on the earnings per share, it is up from what was reported in the last quarter, as well as that revenue around 2.88 expected. So that will be interesting to see. Comparing their quarter that we have the results for versus 2022's, their top line up 12%, bottom line up 260%, their earnings per share up 255%, net profit margin and operating income also up significantly. So that is very strong to see. And when we look at their slide from the investor presentation, when we compare their actual FY23 versus their FY22, we see their revenue is up 13%, slightly lower than what they had originally guided for. Their operating income up 22%, significantly outperforming what they had guided for. And when we look at their non-GAAP operating income, again, up 22% versus their 17% to 19 percent now again if you do want to look at their earnings per share on a gap and non-gap basis we can see that they have not only increased significantly in double digits but also above what they had originally guided for so very positive to see now let's take a look at some important financial metrics as well as that dividend so the dividend is safe 98 score making it very safe 158 billion so it is a mega cap company and when we look at some recessionary metrics well they didn't pay a recession in the last recession at 0709 recession sales plus one percent remember this is above the average growth of companies in the s p 500 which was negative to a small degree and they did also outperform the essential s p 500's negative 55 with a negative 29 percent return now dividend growth 15 percent nice double digit increase in august of this year 15 percent on average over the last five years 16 percent over the last 10 years very very strong to see and as an investor a dividend growth one at that you should be licking your lips at any double digit increase now they have been paying increasing dividends over the last 11 years and in terms of dividend yield theory well it states that the company is undervalued when the current yield sits above the five-year average so you could argue reasonable valuation based on the yield currently and again the same could be said for that forward pe at 34.5 versus the five-year average of 35.2 now, the PE is significantly higher than the information technology PE at 23.3. And as I mentioned, it is right there at the 52-week high. But do bear in mind, 52-week high does not signal overvaluation. Now, as always, earnings is ignored. It is susceptible to manipulation by management through accounting, but you're more than welcome to use that data. I would like to draw your attention to the free cash flow payout. And below 60% is what I love to see, to see those double-digit increases continue. And lo and behold, it has been fairly low over the last 10 years consistently around that 20% mark 2023 at 18% 24 expected around the same very positive to see so I would not be surprised to see a very nice double digit increase in August next year earnings per share again data available for you to analyze but let's draw your attention to the free cash flow per share 442 in 2014 17 in 2023 that is some very nice growth over the last 10 years and in fact you are talking around four times an increase on that free cash flow per share sales growth yes three to seven percent is what we like to see but for a company that has grown like this double digit every single year for the majority of the last 10 years very very positive to see and if it does continue then this could really be one of those in your portfolio that does outshine the others numerically speaking 4.24 billion sales in 2014 23 2023 14.4 nice growth over the period and in terms of share buybacks shares outstanding well they've actually done both share buybacks and issuances of shares over the last 10 years it's gone though from 291 million to 283 and remember when companies do share issuances it dilutes your position and when they do share buybacks they're returning excess cash to your pocket now roic remember 10 percent or more is what we target as it gives us faith that management are effectively allocating their capital and the last few years, it has been around that 10%. So it is positive to see with the last back end of the last 10 years doing some strong double digits, which would be nice to see it go back to that. Now margins, both operating margin, blow it out of the water, that 12% that we look for and that 5%. So very, very strong on the margins. Remembering the higher that operating margin, the higher that bottom line net income should be, which means more dividends and larger increases for investors. Finally, the net debt to EBITDA earnings before interest, tax, depreciation, amortization. Remember, we're looking for a maximum of three, which signals the number of years it would take the company to pay off all of their debt net of cash on hand. And what this is signaling to us, it wouldn't even take the company half a year. It would take them 0.47 of a year to pay that all off. So that dividend is incredibly safe. So now for intro, let's jump into the stock valuation model. And as always, if you do enjoy the content, value is being provided. 
smash that like button it helps put this video out to other investors out there and it lets me know you're enjoying the content hit the subscribe and bell so you are continually notified of these episodes as they drop and finally if you want to grab a copy of the valuation model to get to the intrinsic value and acceptable buy price of companies in your own portfolio do click on that pinned comment below now typically graham's valuation is the first of the four models that we use however as we always say for companies that are extremely fast growing double digits every year it does become irrelevant so we won't be including it but just to see of a new investors what we typically do put the stock ticker symbol in earnings per share growth rate per analyst estimates with that current yield on AAA corporate bonds giving us an intrinsic value which then we then compare to the current trading price so starting off with the first model we're using the multiples valuation model comparing them to companies that we analyze in the same industry roughly the same market cap we have sap salesforce synopsis we have their stock price earnings per share the p multiple of which we get the average, multiply that by the earnings per share to give a multiples valuation price of $839. Now, when we take a look at that, that is far above the current 52 week high and the current trading price, showing some strong signs of undervaluation in the current market. We then move on to the dividend discount model, the second model where we have the yearly dividends, some very, very nice growth around 14% over the last few years. Growth rate forward looking, I've gone 7.5%. Now, people will argue that's too high, or you can go a bit higher. As always, feel free to pick up of the copy of the model below to play around with the percentages. So this gives a DDM price of $774. Now, when comparing that to the current trading price, we see again that it's significantly higher than the 52-week high and well above that current trading price, showing signs again of undervaluation. We then move on to the third model that we're using, my favorite, the discounted cash flow model, where we have the free cash flows year on year. Average growth rate around 18.5%, so we have gone slightly lower than the average growth rate in line with analyst estimations. Using the discount rate, we get the present value of future free cash flows and terminal value. Add together, subtract the total debt, add the cash, get to the equity value, divide by the shares outstanding to give a DCF price of $833. Again, significantly higher than the current trading price and above the 52-week high, showing signs of undervaluation to ensure its market price. Now the intrinsic value is just the average of these models that we have gone through and as always if you do enjoy the content value is being provided do smash that like button do hit the subscribe and bell so you are continually notified of these videos so with the current price at 564 dollars the margin of safety that we always start off with is 10 percent if you believe it has a wide moat strong financial metrics good forward-looking data so it would be a buy up to 734 dollars now, those who are looking for a larger margin of safety, well, at 20%, it would still be a buy up to 652. And at 30%, it would be a buy up to 570. So you are, based on our estimates and judgments, locking in a 30% margin of safety. Now, what do Wall Street say? Well, they believe the share price to go up, but not by too much, by around 5% to $583, which is very interesting. It's one of the first stocks we have reviewed where we have some differences between our intrinsic value and Wall Street's price. Now, if we do very quickly go through the models, the multiple valuation is essentially based on the average PE of companies that we have analyzed that are similar. Now, you could argue maybe that Salesforce deserves its extremely high PE or you could remove it. Then if you go and take a look at that dividend discount model, again, it really depends on what you believe. But given we have you 7.5%, which is significantly lower than the last six years, it does seem to be fair. And again, I guess you could play around with this growth rate if you do want to be more conservative. But if they do hit that 16%, then you are looking at a DCF price of $833. So in my opinion, this intrinsic value does hold some weight. As always, though, do let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Is Intuit one that you hold, one that you're looking to sell? Or just based on the valuation today, what are your thoughts? Do you believe it to be overvalued, undervalued? or some nice room to grow. Don't forget as well, the market cap isn't the largest. It is sitting around $157 billion currently. As always, don't forget if you want to grab a copy of the valuation model to play around with these numbers, whether it's for Intuit or other companies in your own portfolio to get your own acceptable buy price and intrinsic value, then do click on that pinned comment below. As always, have a great day. Don't forget to drop your comments. I'm intrigued to hear what you think. And as always, do like and subscribe if you do enjoy the content. Have a great day and catch you on the next episode.